What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease, and don't panic quite yet. Now, beloved Knicks just wrapped up their final preseason game. It seems like, you know, things are beginning to unfold. But first, I'm going to start off by kicking off the team as a collective, what they did overall, and then we'll com compare the individual battles by position. Now, first off, I want to start off by saying Courtney Lee is still shelved. He has an injury or he's still shelved. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if the team is trying to trade him. I don't know what's really going on, but so far, they still they still have him shelved. Maybe because of injury, I don't know. But continuing on, we're going to Joakim Noah. Of course, the Knicks are trying to still move him. They don't want to pay that extra $6.5 million uh, until, I believe, 2020 on his deal. So they're trying to move him, but it's not probably not going to work out. Most likely, he'll be cut before next Wednesday. And also, in Inez Cantor, he also did not play. He's basically He basically made the starting uh, five, so he's good. His position is solidified. You know, he didn't play this game. So going on the team overall, it seems like, you know, our Knicks are still having problems shooting three-pointers. Basically, for this game, the Knicks field goal percentage in the first half was really bad. We were 16 for 43. We shot 37 percent from field goal range. And then also from three-point range, we were still bad. We were shooting 22 percent by halftime. And that's pretty much, that was the difference of why we were losing in the first half. It just wasn't overall shooting good either from the three or just, you know, from the perimeter. Also, the Knicks overall this whole preseason have struggled as against um, the Wizards. We shot 23%. We shot 20% versus the Nets. We shot another 31% against the Wizards. We also shot 23% against the Pelicans. And by the end of this game, you know, the second half, we actually increased our three-point shooting percentage and got it up to 43%. That's when we made that, that, that basically that quick comeback you know but you know it was it was in vain now the knicks went with a different starting lineup uh ron baker was inserted to, into the starting lineup along with tim hardaway at guard mitchell robinson also started at center kevin knox continues to start at small forward along with lance thomas at the power forward position now going by position it seems like you know tonight of course you know tim hardaway ate up quite quite the usage with you know with no Porzingis there someone has to eat up those shots and it seems like once again Tim Hardaway for most of this preseason has been like this he took over 14 shots in about 25 minutes of action and he had 18 points uh Ron Baker was basically just a filler you know I guess uh coach Fisdale went with a positionless lineup to see how it worked he's still testing out the lineups but Frank did come off the bench and Frank had a pretty good game he was more assertive he was going to the rim. He was finishing. Um, we'll see where, you know, where where he gets at. Because basically tonight, none of the guards, him, Trey Burke, or Moutier, none of them stood out to actually, you know, say, okay, this guy is going to be the starter. So we'll see what happens with them. Moutier tonight, you know, it just it wasn't really that much. Uh, same thing for Trey Burke. It wasn't really... Trey Burke, you know, of course, he offensively he pushes the pace, but... That's pretty much where it ends. Uh, like I said, no one really stood out in the guard. We'll see what Fizdo does. He, he's clearly going to mix and match the liners versus... It depends on the matchup for the night, but like I said, nobody really stood out. Also, going to shooting guard, like I said, Tim Hardaway Jr. did his thing. Also, Hazonia, he, he, played, he played a little shooting and small forward. Hazonia in this game, Mario Hazonia, he actually, he had a shot, he had a good game this game. Uh, he had 14 points off the bench in 20 minutes of action. Hazonia is going to be a nice little filler for us. Hopefully he gets more comfortable and in stride and more comfortable with the team, especially playing, you know, more comfortable playing in the garden. Um, Hazonia used to, it was a former lottery pick, so we'll see what happens with him. And he's also in the contract here. Moving on to the small four position, Kevin Knox, he had another game, you know, he had another game where he struggled a bit. Kevin Knox is a rookie. Let's keep that in mind. He is going to go through these games where he's like, you know, he's basically going to hit some bumps on the road, but he's going to learn from his mistakes. And it seems like Coach Fisdale is comfortable with that because after the game, he basically said for the season, he's going to start Knox. He's going to let Knox, you know, you know, get on his ass a couple of times, you know, figure it out, you know, 
basically transition from being you know a college basketball player into an NBA player he's gonna allow them to make to make a lot of mistakes also Lance Thomas started at the uh, power forward position his um his starting position is basically solidified also he's basically gonna be a starter Lance Thomas once again you know he was he, he, he didn't have a bad game um nothing spectacular but you know at the power forward position when he is on the floor he's always usually at you know a plus his plus minus is usually in the positives um and the team is a bit the team's efficiency rate overall still continues to stay up when he's on the floor mitchell robinson started at center for us and this guy he's gonna be something i tell you that he basically had one block where he just literally he jumped at the three-point line like out of nowhere his recovery speed is insane Mitchell Robinson is going to be pretty solid just you know his positioning and his stamina I know it's like his stamina it's, it's going to increase in time but Mitchell Robinson is going to be a nice a nice filler for us it'll be very interesting to see you know who makes this the starting 15-man roster um also uh with Mitchell Robinson starting then it seems like the Knicks mixed and match we had uh Noah Von Lee also play center very strong down low he even bought the ball up the court a couple of times um he had a good amount of rebounds some blocks this guy is very strong from the inside like i said he has like this amari stoudemire inside strength you know where he, you know in the paint he he can get some buckets luke cornett also came off the bench he made he made a couple of threes he does stretch the floor um, it'll be interesting to see how the Knicks, uh, especially how Fisdale utilizes him in the lineups. Overall, we do have to make some cuts. You know, like I said, Joe Noah probably won't be here by Wednesday. Uh, Alonzo Trier at the shooting guard position. The only thing about Alonzo Trier tonight, I would say, is that once again, it's really ISO with him. When he's, when he's you know, scoring, he really doesn't look to pass. His head is kind of down. And if he's not scoring, he's not really efficient. He's not passing the ball. He's not rebounding or getting steals like that. So we'll see what happens with him. Hopefully, I would say it'll be it'll be a good learning experience for him to make the start at 15. Because just like Kevin Knox, I feel like the more experience he gets and the more mistakes he gets, the better he learns. Also, I wanted to mention, in most of these preseason games, you know, our points off of turnovers was pretty high. We have... We had pretty much more points off of turnovers than most of the teams that we played with in the preseason. Uh, our overall pace is up, which is always good to see because the Knicks were always usually a slow-paced team like the Utah Jazz, you know, or like the San Antonio Spurs. I don't know why we always played like that, but this season is going to be very interesting to see. You know, you know, it's going to be more exciting with the team in a more faster pace, more modern NBA style of play. So I just wanted to say also, you know, we're going to see what cuts are made. Joakim Noah will probably be out of the team. I mean, unless we make a trade. Um, other than that, you know, I'll keep you guys up to date on, you know, the cuts, you know, the starting lineups, you know, the final 15 man roster, basically. And, you know, overall, I'm going to do a breakdown of how we compare to the rest of the Atlantic division. That's very important because this Atlantic division is shaping up to be maybe perhaps one of the toughest divisions in the league right now. I mean, as far as like, you know, looking at the players in it now versus like their potential going forward in the next couple of years. So I also provide a breakdown with that. You guys stay safe. Until next time. Peace.